for sale. Now we have every angle's favorite rune, ing. This rune makes the ng sound in singer or the ng sound in finger. In various dialects, the former word is still said as singer, hence why it's allowed for both sounds. In spite of that, if your dialect distinguishes those sounds, we recommend only using it for the ng sound and writing the g separately. But regardless, this rune is considered the cluster, so it's never doubled. Next we have calc, which makes the k sound. It has a unique double form shown on screen now. How calc took its form historically is a matter of some speculation. It may have been elks inverted or a mirrored bind rune of chen. Regardless, because Chen was the original character to make the k sound in English, we want to honor that heritage by at least partially retaining it. So, the rule is that when the sound k occurs before a consonant, you can write it using Chen instead of calc if you wish. But the only time that's required is at the start of a word. For example, crumb or class. You could use it in a word like acting, but consider whether using calc would be clearer in that sort of case. Admittedly, this could cause some limited confusion, but it's also a quick way of testing who learned how to write modern English footwork properly with reference to the touchstone. Next up is gar. Gar always appears last in the Anglo-Saxon rune row. If you see it positioned anywhere else, you know someone's made a mistake. Ga makes the hard g sound in the word go. Note that when doubled, some fonts will only position the bows on either side of it around the whole bind rune, but not in the middle. That's because of how it's historically derived from the rune yivu. So don't be confused if you see that. Hail typically makes the fortis h sound, but in some dialects it allophonically makes its lenis equivalent in words like behind. Hopefully that won't cause anyone any problems though. Mm -hmm.